evening, everybody, and welcome back. This is your host of Renewable Radio, Artie Perry, uh, built by CED Green Tech. Uh, good evening, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody's enjoying their summer. And yes, that sun uh, continues to shine, and with it, it brings some uh, generated energy savings to uh, all those wonderful uh, homeowners out there. Uh, tonight's a big night. Uh, and, and with big nights, we got big titles. We got uh, founders, you know, faces of the solar industry, especially here on Long Island. And I have a very special guest, uh, Mike Bayless. He's the co-founder and chief sales officer of Sun Nation Solar Systems. Mike, thanks so much for taking some time out of your busy schedule and coming down here to hang out on Renewable Radio tonight. Hey, thank you. Uh, it's a great opportunity to uh, show the world what uh, we have to offer. Well, Mike, I mean, we're, we're going to get into learning more about Sun Nation, and, and I think that's probably the best way to kind of start this off is I, I am so interested um, in, 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 again, you know, working with the, these wonderful companies here on Long Island and how every company kind of brings, you know, a, a different benefit to each, uh, each customer. Uh, and you've been doing this as long as anybody, if not longer than most. And you developed, you know, your, your brand is built around, you know, solar and how it should be. So why don't, why don't you tell us? So how should solar be? Well, solar should be an installation that you can be proud of. Solar should be a, an installation that uh, works really well, that looks real good, um, and really does what is supposedly promised. The problem out there today is there's a lot of inferior product or inferior installations and what sun nation brings to the table is quality and experience and the right way to do it so now one of the things i mean some people actually believe solar should be free i mean i'm in the supply industry here i'm not seeing a lot of free i mean what's your take on that well solar energy is free there is no tax on the sun the equipment that is necessary to collect that energy is not free, but the average homeowner, when going with the right program, can get into solar, meaning they can install a solar system on their home with no out-of-pocket investment. And with the incentives that are available and the funding programs that are available, there's absolutely never been a better time to get involved in solar. And if you have the right application, if your home is sitting there in the sun right now baking, then it can be converted into an energy-saving and money-producing piece of equipment. So, Mike, I mean, one of the things here, I mean, you are uh, the largest um, you know, family-owned uh, residential solar company here on Long Island. Uh, thousands of, of installations over the past 15 years. Um, and uh, l- l- let's go back to year one. Um, because some of the things you just said here about, you know, being able to take advantage of solar, uh, not necessarily existed, um, you know, 15 years ago. So I mean, how, take us through it. I mean, how did you, how did it start? How did it start? Well, the, the real start to Sun Nation really goes all the way back to the late seventies. And when I had just gotten out of college and I was sitting on a gas line, uh, try, and this was 19, 1977, um, Jimmy Carter, the president, put solar on the White House. And I started to really, that was the, the seed about what is Sun Nation is today. It was, I was thinking, what is an option? What's an alternative to what we're dealing with right now? And that's the spark that started the Sun Nation uh, roller coaster, so to speak. Um My story in solar is kind of interesting in that in those days, way back when, there was no internet. Anything you could learn about solar was in a book. And I wasn't much of a reader. Just got out of college, and I decided that the best thing to do was to visit and talk to people because I enjoy talking to people. So, unfortunately, it wasn't a matter of getting on the phone and calling somebody. I needed to engage. So I got a backpack. And I had $800 in my pocket, and I hitchhiked all around the country. And I went and visited solar companies the, the, from little to big all around uh, the country in the summer of 1977. Put about 10,000 miles on, my, uh, on, on the road and visited probably 40 or 50 different companies along the way. I ended up 
uh, in uh, Dallas, Texas, in the middle of the trip, which was the second annual solar convention with about 150 vendors. Today, you go to a solar convention and there's 1,500. Um, we, uh, what I did at that point was to really learn about the industry at that time. Now, it wasn't the industry it is today. It was uh, a solar hot water market at that point, but I learned a lot. That was sort of getting my master's. Uh, in solar. Yeah, let me jump in. I mean, you know, one of the things about solar and, and doing it how it should be is you'll you'll often find a, a core group of installers, um, whether they're scattered here on Long Island or, or scattered throughout the country. Um, you know, what was one takeaway that you can kind of maybe share um, that, you know, in traveling across the, the country? I mean, what was one thing you've seen consistent throughout that you wanted to bring here to Long Island and emulate it and, and take it to the next level. What was, or it, don't limit it to one, but what was one thing that really stood out to you? No, it was very, it's actually very simple. It was a passion. It was a belief. It was, it, in some respects, it was almost like a religion. People believed that they could change the world, that they can change the way energy was collected and, 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 and used. And that's the passion that I, I became infected um, when I went on that trip. And I was convinced that that is exactly what I wanted to do, so to speak, when I grew up. Well, you know, I, back in the day, the President Jimmy Carter had a big energy uh, um, a speech. And within that speech, there was a section that he described the, the, the problem as the moral equivalent of war. Now, I just got past the, 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 the Vietnam era, didn't quite get there. I was just young enough to not get in, it was close. And I wasn't much of, a, of, 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 of that kind of a person. I was really more pacifist. But I said, you know what, this is a war that I could fight. This is a war that I could join and be proud of. And so that day I became a soldier and went out and started to really promote the idea that this was a solution. This was an answer. A lot of people in those days thought I was out of my mind. And I had friends that to, to this day, almost up until recently, thought I was nuts. But I proved that, in fact, I was right. I may have been a little bit ahead of my time, but the reality is the, the direction that this world needs to go is towards a renewable future. Yeah, and, and Mike, you know, th thanks again for coming and joining the show here, Renewable Radio, built by CED Green Tech. Uh, with me tonight, I have Mike Bayless, the co-founder and chief sales officer of Sun Nation Solar Systems. And he's kind of taking me through this, this journey, you know, this, his master's course uh, across the country and, and understanding, you know, you, know, you know, where do we go next? So, you know, we, we go across the country. This passion is, uh, in fact, uh, infectious at this point. Um, and, and then you come back. And who's the first person? Did you bring anybody with you? Um. <laughs> well, when I got back, I ultimately, the, the, the story is too long to go on forever. But basically, I ended up in Arizona for a few years uh, where solar was kind of taken off. And then in, uh, the, in, in 1981, uh, Governor Carey signed a solar tax credit bill here in New York that brought me back to New York to be involved in the industry here. And that was kind of the beginning. Unfortunately, the Reagan era, era came along quite thereafter and wiped out the start of the solar um, programs that were available. And we all kind of went into a hiatus waiting for something to happen. And that really started to happen again in 2001 when the local utility, in this case LIPA, uh, decided to put a program together called the Solar Pioneer Program and created a tremendous incentive for people and to get involved in solar and for companies to start up. And that's what exactly what happened. Uh, I came to my partner, who's also my first cousin, who happened to be a master electrician, and I proposed the idea of starting the company at that time. And... He said, what do we need to do? And he says, well, the first thing we need to do is to learn some more about solar. So we took some classes and we got to the point where uh, we at least had the experience to, to know what we needed to do. 
So when we come back, we're, we're going to be talking with Mike Bayless here, uh, and we're going to learn more about this story and, and his uh, coming into fruition of being uh, the modern-day solar soldier uh, for Long Island. And uh, we'll be right back. This is Artie Perry with Renewable Radio, built by CED Green Tech. Host of Renewable Radio, Artie Perry, uh, built by CED Green Tech. Uh, tonight we're hanging out with Mike Bayless. He's the co-founder and chief sales officer over at uh, Sun Nation Solar Systems, uh, and we're learning maybe a new nickname. At least unbeknownst to me, he he is the Solar Soldier. Uh, I want to get to that, and uh, we just kind of uh, took an interesting trip uh, through you know the you know the the forming years, the formative uh, years for for Mike as he. You know, went to go learn about solar by going and taking a look at best practices and, and catching an infectious uh, infectious passion uh, for solar um, and, and realizing that hey I mean this is this is this can change the world this is paradigm shifting stuff and Mike thanks for coming down tonight and uh, help tell this story thank you so so Mike um, you we talked about you know the impact and I want to get into this a little bit more um, you know the impact that the Reagan era had on on policy and, and helping jumpstart this or, or actually inhibit it at the time um, and in 2001 there were some policies in place uh, you know specifically uh, you know LIPA and our utility you know uh, here on Long Island um, let, let's kind of follow up on that so you know at 2001 you, you sense that the timing was right, you know, for a reboot here on Long Island. And this is 16 years ago at, at this point. Uh, what led you to, to see that the timing was, was correct? Well, again, it was, a, it was a small little blurb in the newspaper that Liper was offering a rebate for at $6 per watt. Now, that's extraordinary. That, 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 that's a tremendous rebate program. It was a short-lived program, but it immediately got my attention. Uh, I did a very quick research on it and got right involved with the program. We installed a system on my uh, partner's house. Um, and that, as today, we, we learned that it, it was the 14th system that was installed online. There was really nobody doing anything, maybe one or two companies that were just left over from the solar hot water era. And so we were right there at the beginning. I mean, really at the beginning stages. And uh, I just went out. To, I just went to work. I mean, we, I spent uh, a couple of years really just building the business. First year, we had four sales when we started. The second year, 16. The third year, 32. And it just kept building and building. And it became more than a, just a, a, a hobby. It became a real business. And in 2008, we ended up opening up our first store so to speak our first office and by then we'd had already a couple of hundred installations and we were off and running yeah and and so one of the things about this and, and starting to realize that um you know not only is this not a hobby this is a, a business uh you can sustain a living on this um you can you know change the way we receive power in the in this you know and the planet um one of the other fun things is you, you said you put this on your partner scott's house um, and that probably helped answer the most important pointed question that I, I, I would still get today from, from customers. Uh, does solar actually work? Um, so you had that as, a, as a, an example. Look, it works. Yep. The system that we installed on his house, he ended up moving. And the new homeowner wanted to actually change the way the structure of the house was. So we ended up taking those modules off, but then reinstalling them back. And they're still up there working today, 15, 16 years later. Those, those modules are still working. And I go back to a lot of my old original customers way back when, and the systems are working just fine. Uh, and this is systems that have been installed and operational for 12, 13, 14 years. So today, and we'll fast forward to today, I mean, some of the technology that we're offering has warranties that extend 25 years. Uh, you've seen technology that was installed 10, even 15 years ago, still on the roof of customers, still working today. That's right. I mean, the modules have been have proven out to be durable. The only real difference between the modules that we installed 15 years ago and today is the efficiency of the solar cell. 
the technological improvements that have been made have done two things. One, it has driven the efficiency up and the cost to produce them way down. And so where we used to spend 3 to $4 a watt just for a module, today we're paying under a dollar a watt for the best products ever made. Yeah, and that's kind of one of the things is, um, you know, what would you say has stayed the same from 15 years ago to today? Because um, I know the technology has changed, but uh, with the government not you know, subsidizing as much, the prices of these super efficient, high producing panels have fallen mm-hmm. where it, it's... The, the, the thing that's exactly the same, and this has shifted a little bit over the years, and this is the part that's to me is fascinating. The rebate programs, the tax credit programs, all of these incentive programs were specifically designed to make solar cost effective at that time based on the pricing of the systems. Back in the day, we used to install a system that was seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000, but after all of the incentives and rebates, the net cost was roughly $20,000. Today, We install a system that might be $35,000, and with the incentives that are available, the cost of the system is $20,000. So what we're essentially seeing is that the net cost after all of the incentives has remained almost the same within plus or minus 10 or 15% for the most part. Um, The only difference, of course, from the early days to now is the cost of electricity has significantly increased. When we first got in the business, it was roughly around... 14 cents a kilowatt hour now we're back to with fuel adjustment costs approaching 20 21 cents a kilowatt hour and that's where the big change is yeah and i think i mean what would you say to those customers that are still waiting you know they're still waiting because i bet you you may even have some customers from 15 years ago that are still waiting because technology is advancing so much what what, what do you say to them what are you waiting for we if you waited for the at this point now there's no more rebates all right. If you had gotten in two, three years ago, there were significant rebates. So at the end of the day, the question is, what are you waiting for? The technological improvements that have been made in solar, again, have improved the efficiency. But at the end of the day, the cost per watt installed at net is all about the same, about $2, maybe a little bit less. Yeah, and I can speak certainly, you know, here on Renewable Radio, our our focus here is setting the record straight on going green and, you know, being uh, the largest, you know, electrical and, you know, solar supply company in the the country, uh, you know, 600 locations in 50 states. um, We see the technology. You know, we see the technology. And, yes, it has come a long way, um, but there is no magic. We're not going to be installing one single panel on a house and power an entire house. That, That is not coming. It still requires some uh, area. The difference is that when we used to fill up a roof with solar modules, maybe we're able to produce 50%, 60% of their consumption on an annual basis. Now we can fill up a roof and, in fact, do 100%. Um, You know, the biggest change, I think, financially for people is really being able to determine how they should purchase solar or lease it or do some other type of programs. And I think this uh, uh, is something that needs to be explained because people are still confused about what's going on. Yeah. And I think, I mean, this is a perfect forum to actually set the record straight on that. And and I know I'm guilty as a salesperson. Sometimes I like to sell the way I like to sell and uh, solar companies that uh, are not rooted here like to sell the way they like to sell. Uh, you being here, living in the community here, uh, your business is right here in Ronkonkoma, right, right within reach of this station. Um, I mean, let's set the record straight on that. I mean, what what is best for the customer? Well, what is best for the customer ultimately is what is best for their home and best for their pocket. If they are a typical homeowner and they're paying income taxes from the income that they earn and they have a tax appetite and they have a good application, they absolutely should purchase a system. Now, if they don't have the cash, and most people don't, typically spend cash on home improvements they typically fund it through some type of financing program and that's clearly what most people do today and when you do that basically they're just making a decision to fix their cost of electricity at a given number 
instead of watching the cost continue to go up. And they have what we call is cash flow positive. It might save $200 a month in electricity, but it might only cost them $125 a month until this, the system is ultimately paid off. Now, there are scenarios and there are options alternative to owning or purchasing a system. I mean, purchasing cash outright is clearly the best high-level return on investment. You know, you, within six years on an average system, it's paid off completely. But if you can't do that, you fund it through the many programs that are available. There are a group of people that don't generate tax appetite, whether they're retired, whether they're on disability, maybe their income and deductions are such that they don't have a lot of tax appetite. Those people could consider programs for leasing and PPAs. And Mike Bayless with Sun Nation Solar Systems here is making a, a pretty important comment, and that is that solar has never been more available to a wider group of, of folks here on Long Island in this country. Um, and we're going to get more into that, and we're going to follow up on Mike's journey as he has become the 2017 uh, solar soldier here for Long Island and uh, help build, a, build the industry that is here on Long Island. We'll be right back. This is Artie Perry with... Renewable Radio, built by CED Green Tech. Welcome back, everybody, and good evening. This is your host, Artie Perry, with Renewable Radio, built by CED Green Tech, Long Island. And uh, we have an amazing opportunity here tonight. We're, we're hanging out with Mike Bayless, the uh, co-founder and chief sales officer for Sun Nation Solar Systems. Uh, and one of my favorite things about this industry is uh, whether you've been doing it for 15, 20 years or longer, or being a pioneer and you know even being there for day one on uh, the Jimmy Carter administration days, um, the market, uh, the solar market just changes so much and it, and it gives the opportunity for so many young folks to come enter in this market. Uh, it's very cool to, to be, I guess, a quasi young folk in here and, and being able to talk to Mike Bayless and kind of get that history, you know, that important history and what brought us to solar today. So, Mike, thanks for coming down and, and helping tell that story. Thank you. And, and I, I, I do want to get some advice for those young folks, but we'll save that for the end there. Uh, but one of the things I want to talk about is, so, you know, we started getting into the story of Sun Nation and, and really kind of the journey and, and, and that, that inspiration that came from you spending some time going out there and traveling the country and meeting other solar installers and, and really being tied to policy and politics and understanding that, you know, for solar to really get moving, uh, you needed the government to, to, to incentivize it to help lower the costs um, which allowed manufacturers to start you know, subsidizing their equipment and getting it on the roofs of, of customers. So that actually made economic sense. So you know, in that journey, I mean, here we are in 2017. Um, Mike, you know, you, you've, you've shared this amazing story of you traveling around in your, in your you know, college you know, vehicle, you know, get, you know, you know, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, and you were inspired by uh, what you had seen in this country. Um, and you decided, you know what, um, while you know, the, the Vietnam era is, is ending, you know, that war is ending, there's a new war, and that's a kind of war on energy. We, we've seen it successful with uh, the war on poverty to a, de- to a degree. So now there's this war on energy. And you know, how do you feel kind of being termed a little bit maybe as that solar soldier? Uh, and where are you now today in 2017? What does Sun Nation look like today uh, in 2017? Well, 2017... Uh, is uh, been a very, very exciting year for us because we've kind of changed certain focuses. You know, for many, many years, we've been installing, uh, selling and installing residential systems, and we started to pick up a little steam a few years ago with commercial. Now we're pushing really hard with commercial because there's thousands and thousands of buildings out there that have these beautiful flat roofs that have absolutely no sun on them. I have a sun on them all day with no solar on it. And conversely, there's about 40,000 or more solar systems already installed. And many of the best applications residentially are sort of already starting to fill in. Now, we still believe that there is opportunity to install systems on homes. There's probably another... 100,000 opportunities out there, but there's over 1.1 million ratepayers, and there's a lot of people that can't go solar. Their house is not right. They're living in an area with a lot of big trees, 
Uh, they have uh, a bad roof, multiple reasons. And yet all of these commercial opportunities are easy. When I say easy, there's obviously easy relative to having good access to the sun. Uh, and what has come out in 2017 is the concept of community solar. This is the now and future of solar on Long Island. What we're looking to do is to essentially take commercial and residential and put them together. And what that means is that we can install a commercial designed array on a 100,000 square foot building, all right, pay the owner of the building to lease his roof and take that electricity, send it right into the grid and have subscribers, all mostly residential subscribers that will get credits from each kilowatt hour that's produced by that array. Now, this concept of community solar allows everyone, whether they're a rental or an owner, whether they have a good application or not, they can get into saving 20 to 25 percent on their electric bill through the community solar program. For those that want to actually host and own the system, they are, there's an income proper, property on their roof. So that's the now, that's the future. We are right now presenting the first community solar opportunities. I've already have 70 or 80 people signed up, ready to go for the first community solar project, and we expect that to be operational before the year is out. And that, that is wonderful news because, you know, doing the math, I've done the math probably 100 times over in my head as well, is that, you know, we have about 800,000 homes here in Nassau, Suffolk County, on Long Island, uh, and about only one in four are actually probably eligible uh, whether it's roof or trees or uh, you know, other assortment of, of issues, um, grid, you know, the grid being able to support it. And, um, you know, Mike is here. He's the co-founder and uh, chief sales officer for Sun Nation Solar Systems. Uh, and he's presenting or he's not even presenting. He, he is kind of starting to reveal a little bit behind the community solar initiative that we see um, throughout the world. Um, we see it in Germany for sure. Uh, we see it happening in California. We see it happening in the boroughs. Um, and you know we're we're at the the ground floor of of seeing it start to happen here on Long Island, where um, if your home was not a candidate, the three out of four folks whose home was not a good candidate is now they're now going to be able to see you know the same benefits of, of having solar as some of the, the folks who have um, it on their house. Right, without even ever having a solar system installed on their home. That's the beauty of it. That is, anybody that wants to invest in clean energy. Essentially, all it is is a subscription service. They're saying, okay, we're going to install a, a megawatt system on some large building, and that would represent perhaps 100 customers, 150 customers saving money on their electric bill because they're opting in to purchase electricity at a discounted rate over what the present PSEG rate. And it's okay with PSEG. That's the interesting thing. People say, well, we're conflicting or, or uh, it's a conflicting thing and we're, 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 we're going up against them. The reality is that PSEG needs to have this renewable energy generation located all across Long Island. And in some areas, it actually helps their grid. So they're for that. Yeah, and one of the things that's an important point, uh, Mark Harrington, you know, uh, you know, energy reporter there for a Newsday uh, here on Long Island, um, has pretty much put out there that for the first time in recent years, um, the you know LIPA and the Oversight Board uh, has seen that we don't need to necessarily necessarily add new power sources or get to new contracts um, because a lot of it is starting to be generated by the solar industry. That's you know, here right. on Long Island. So it's actually helping PSEG. Right. We've, they've already come out. They've, they've done the studies. They keep repeating these studies to verify it. But, you know, we're right somewhere in the vicinity of about a peak of about 6,000 megawatts of peak capacity during the hottest days of the summer. And they've basically predicted that through the initiatives that LIPA has taken over the last 15 years with energy efficiency and solar and renewable energy, and now with wind farm opportunities and the such, that over the next 10 years, they will not see any increase in that peak demand because even as more homes uh, get built and they're more efficient, LED lighting, more efficient motors, 
Uh, you've got, even with the, the increase in electric cars and increasing the demand on that side, there's so many other ways of production like solar and wind that will offset that. So at the end of the day, we're not building more power plants. That's the reason they decided not to take on the Caithness uh, plant because they didn't need it. They didn't need to spend that money. Yeah, and I kind of want to take it to the to the next, the application level here. Um, so one of my favorite uh, you know projects to talk about, especially with my students at Suffolk Community College, is um, you know the HOV lane on uh, on our Long Island Expressway. And there, there's nothing more infuriating than when I'm sitting there in traffic, not not with a buddy in the car, and I'm looking at a vacant HOV lane, and, and no one is buddying up and using that. And I kind of think that speaks a lot to kind of our maybe just us as human beings, or maybe in particular Long Islanders or New Yorkers. Um, how are you going to see folks coming together um, and working towards a community solar when we, we sometimes don't even want to share our car to, to just get places faster, which is also saving energy? Well, fact is that they don't have to come together. You know, you need a company like Sun Nation to facilitate it. You know, we, we are essentially the catalyst. We look for the sites to install the systems. We get the third-party entities involved that financially can afford to lay it out. We bring the individuals that are interested because every time we get someone call, on, call, the, call us on the, on the phone and says, hey, I'm interested in solar, and we take a look at their house on the satellite because I'm really sorry to tell you this, but you really don't have a good application. However, if you are interested in saving money on your electric bill, have you considered community solar? And that is now a great opportunity. I probably have spoken to 15,000 people over the years, and not every one of them I've installed a system for. Many of them are going to be community solar opportunities. Well, I mean, this is super exciting and, you know, really kind of demonstrates a public-private partnership, too, and having a, 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 a reputable company in Sun Nation, you know, helping lead the way and help build uh, the platform to be able to actually offer solar energy, the benefits of solar energy, to folks who could not have received it. And, and I often found those are the people who wanted it the most, too. So, Mike, thanks for sharing that. This is Artie with Renewable Radio, built by CED Green Tech, and uh, we're taking a break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, this is Renewable Radio, built by CED Green Tech, Long Island. And uh, you know, we are once again you know, leading the way on helping set the record straight on going green. There, there's so much information out there. And uh, you know, today, uh, I had the wonderful opportunity to spend some time with Mike Bayless. He is the co-founder and chief sales officer of Sun Nation Solar Systems. And you know, he's really taken us on a journey here of you know, really defining you know, how solar should be done and how it should be uh, you know, installed here in your home and, and how you should really, you know, uh, be looking and, and picking uh, the, the right solar pro, uh, provider. Uh, he also took us through, you know, really almost 20, 25 plus years of just where, where this, this market has headed. Uh, and now we're in 2017 where this market seems to change every day. So Mike, you know, thanks so much for coming on and, and sharing your story tonight. Thank you. So one of the things we came across is, you know, back in the in the seventies, going into the eighties, you know, you really were inspired to take on this uh, this role, this war on en energy, essentially, and saying, hey, look, let's you know, let's let homeowners be able to you know gain the benefit of being energy independent, you know, you know, t being ge generating energy themselves. I um, mean, you kind of got this little nickname maybe under the table here, but you're you're the solar soldier. And, and that kind of makes a lot of sense in 2017 because you are one of, you know, not only one of the founders here in Long Island in helping build, you know, pave the way for solar, um, but you're one of the most outspoken leaders too. You know, wh where do you find the time to do that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that that's a, an interesting question. I, you know, I'm such a firm believer in what I do. I'm passionate about it. Um, my wife says that's all I ever talk about. Uh, she's probably right. And, you know, I, I'm usually real quiet in a room until somebody mentions the word solar and then my ears perk up and I'm off to the races. Um, going, it's not going to work for me. This has been a lifelong dream. You know, when I look back to that, 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 that spark, that minute 
1977 when I said, this is what I want to do, I am doing exactly what I want to do. And that is to promote solar the way it should be. Uh, Sun Nation has grown over 100 people strong. We've installed over 2,500 systems. We've installed some of the largest systems on Long Island. We, have, we, have, we, we, we expect to be the first company to do community solar on Long Island. Um, we're innovators. And the thing that makes Sun Nation so different, and, and, I, and I only take partial credit for this because in reality this is where my partner comes into play, and it's a culture. It is a belief that what we're doing is absolutely special and the people that come to work, this is their second home, and they, they are infected, just like I was, believing that this is the right thing to do, the right way. And the customer experience to us is absolutely number one. We go way overboard than most to make sure that our clients are kept in the loop from the minute that they're engaged to the point of the system turning the meter backwards and then on through there. We have methodologies by which we make multiple touch points all along the way to make sure that they know exactly what's going on. Because unfortunately, as, my, as Scott likes to describe it, and, and he speaks to all of the individual homeowners, he calls them up individually and thanks them personally. And he says, "Solar is the solar process is sort of like a Thanksgiving. You spend eight hours preparing and then 20 minutes eaten. When it comes down to the installation day, in one day or so, the system's installed, but it took three months to get there. And um, the, 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 it's, it's such an exciting thing for the first time to watch the meter turn backwards and, and start selling electricity back to the utility company. That's, that's always was, every time I see it, it's, it's an exciting event. Yeah, and I always found that, you know, being in this industry, you know, seven years, uh, you know, when you sell maybe energy efficient windows, sure, you, you think it's working, you don't feel a draft. Um, but when you put solar on the roof, you're actually seeing your bills go down, you're seeing energy produced and with monitoring and everything today, you're actually watching it do what it's supposed to do. You could quantify it. That's right. Uh, and that really, that that's contagious. And I, I kind of want to you know expand to that. And you know, one of my favorite things to do is uh, when I meet people and they say that they have solar, I love asking them. I love asking them, all right, well, who did your system? You know, uh, here in CED, we work with a, a great group of installers, and Sun Nation is one of them. And I love to kind of play the guessing game because um, a lot sometimes is said by just the, you know, those values that you talked about are often found and shared with those customers. So, you know, what does a Sun Nation, you know, solar customer look like? You know, it's a great question because we've actually been asking that. And in fact, one of the things that Scott has been doing now is he's been looking for, the demographic, what, who is a Sun Nation customer? And he's everybody. She's everybody. I mean, we have teachers, firemen, police officers. We have uh, exclusive homeowners that are hedge fund billionaires on the east end of Long Island. We have the, 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 single, the single mother with three kids. All right. We have, them, we have every single level of demographic. Um, what we try to do is we try to find the right program that fits them, but our customers, the one that just wants to do the right thing, save money, believe that clean energy is the right way to go. I mean, there was a reason to say that 89% of the people in this country believe that solar is, is a, is a solution. It's not the only solution, but it is a solution. And that's the direction that, you know, our clients want to believe in. Yeah, and that's also refreshing to hear. And, and the economics need to make sense. And um, I always found that at that table, when you're meeting with those customers, and they say, "Okay, we see the you know the immediate benefit. I'm going to, uh, depending on whatever program I choose, I can invest a lot of money, see a great return. I can invest no money, see immediate savings, and control that bill through time. Um, but either way, I'm going to see some immediate benefits uh, and long-term benefits uh, all rolled into this." Um, you know, that, that's always exciting. And then they say, well, hey, and you know what? Like, this is, this is really good for the environment and really good for the future. And I have kids or grandkids. 
Um, it really does, you know, hit those people in their heart and say, like, I'm doing a good thing too. Right. It's not just saving money. Yeah, I'm. I'm sure that it's a political hand, you know, a, a political statement to think that there's, that I personally believe that there is climate change, that we need to do something about it. Maybe the present administration doesn't think so highly of that. Well, you know what? If we don't do something, Long Island could disappear in 50 or 75 years. I want my kids and my grand potential grandchildren and the ones that come after to have the same lovely Long Island that, that we have, that be able to go down to the beach and, and actually have more than just a little strip of land to make sure that water doesn't come up into their homes this is what potentially can happen in the future, and we need to do something about it. Again, this is not the only solution. There's a lot of things out there that need to get done. We need to go to a clean, green environment. We need to go to electric cars instead of fossil fuel burning cars. We need to go to all different types of clean energy, whether it's wind power, whether it's tidal power, whether it's solar energy collection as, as I know it, PV. Any and every way that we can reduce our uh, fossil fuel emissions is going to be the long-term solution to our problem. Yeah, and, and, and you know, this is self-sustainable, and what it does, the, we, you know, we talked about having panels that have been around for over 15 years still functioning here on Long Island, and that, that technology has grown exponentially. Um, it has plateaued a bit as far as, you know, that, that big explosion. And, and now we're, we're, we have this wonderful technology that is uh, very affordable, um, very practical. Put that on, on your roof or not. Uh, we, we even talked about kind of the, you know, the entrance of this market at, with Sun Nation on community solar basis. So, I mean, these are all wonderful things that help shape the future and the communities that we live in, you know, being a local installer. Uh, so, you know, to, to wrap up, what I'd like to do is I have Mike Bayless, the co-founder and chief sales officer for Sun Nation Solar Systems. And, you know, his mantra is, you know, solar how it should be. It's his company's mantra. Um, and, you know, I, I want to give you the kind of that final word. And, and that is, you know, why Sun Nation? We heard a lot of wonderful things about your story and your journey. Um, but for those folks out there, there are tens of thousands. There are over 100,000 folks and more. Um, you know, why choose Sun Nation? We put the customer first. We have the experienced people. We don't subcontract anything. Everything gets done in-house from the initial site inspection to uh, the installation. And everything in between is done by our people. We, can, we, we, we have, as I said, multiple, multiple touch points with our clients. We put qualified people on your, uh, on your roof. We put qualified people behind the phone. We monitor the systems proactively. We, we make sure that not only is the system installed cleanly and properly, but it will work for the next 25 to 30 years. Mike, thank you so much for coming on Renewable Radio, built by CED Green Tech. Uh, what a wonderful story, an inspirational story. And I think we have like 10 other episodes after all the wonderful things we talked about today. So thank you again. This is Artie Perry, your host, and I'm signing off, and everybody have a great and sunny week. The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of this station, JVC Broadcasting Management, or its sponsors.